Have you ever wondered why the art teachers just go on and on and on about values? And what does value actually do in a painting? Well, we're going to take a look at a couple of John F. Carlson's paintings, the author of Carlson on Landscape Painting, and see why that may be. So let's get started. So as I said, we're gonna take a look at a couple of John Carlson paintings tonight. So we're gonna look at them on the screen first because I think the color is a bit better here. And then we'll jump over to the iPad and, and uh, point and dissect a bit. First, like always, I think it's important just to take a minute and look at the painting right look at look with your own eyes what do you see what do you see how does it make you feel what in the painting do you notice what in the painting do you not notice Okay, so why is, why is value so important? Well, because that's actually where the structure of the painting comes from. Even after we remove all the color and just look at it in black and white, look how strong that is. Even that one single tree stands in front of that second group of trees. And then what a brilliant distance it is back to the third group of trees. And notice how the snow on the ground in the foreground is lighter than the snow as you go back. Right? So as you're going back towards infinity, it's a gray that you're going towards. It's not a white. And if we really disorient you, can you see how we're really made up of horizontals, or in this case, verticals, because we reverse them, you know, diagonals, but it's that versus the horizontals in this case, or the verticals if we're looking at it regularly. And I talk a lot about the idea of variety. So with that in mind, just look at the different tree trunks, the size, the spacing, right? So that's variety in the foreground. And then in the background, there's a lot less variety. Here's another one of John Carlson's. Again, just take a minute Take a minute just to take it in. What do you notice? How does it make you feel? So with this one, like on the last one, let's remove the color. And I would argue the painting's just as strong. Just as strong. Look at that image. Right, so if we were talking in the language that we talk about, our lightest light would be the snow in the fort. What's that shape? Right, and then is there white in other places or is it just right there? Not gray, but white. And then the darkest darks, where do you see the darkest darks? In the foreground trees? Are there any of that, is there any of that value in the background trees? None, right? 
So that clean value separation is what gives such structure. And again, if we reorient ourselves, sometimes it's easier to see it as value shapes when it's not so easily interpreted as a landscape. Okay, so one last look. Right, so even though there's these big, solid, singular shapes, the scene still feels very natural. Very natural. I remember reading his book when, we, when I was a young student. And it's Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. It's not very thick, it's paperback. It, you know, not written real impressively. And so you can just kind of think, oh yeah, I've got that. No, no, try to really hear what he's saying, especially in the values and how those values work. And then go out in nature and have a look and see, is that how, is that how it's working? Do I, is that what I see? Is that what I see? So let's head over to the iPad and take a look at this. Let me make myself a little bit smaller so I'm not intruding. There we go. So notice the color, the yellow in the foreground. And how does that differ from the yellow back there? And we're taking a look at this because all, at first we don't really know what darker, richer to lighter grayer looks like. And it's hard for us to trust it. And so when we do see it, we want to investigate that. And look at that tree in the foreground, that big tree with the snow up it, and how that value is just a tad bit stronger than those trees behind it. You see that? And that with the size, and then also compare the snow on the tree in the foreground to the snow on the tree in the background. The foreground is lighter snow and the background is darker. And then the tree in the foreground is darker and the background is lighter. So there's less difference between that tree just back there and that one in the foreground. So if you keep those things in order and then compare that to the trees, even behind that, right? When we blow it up really abstract, you can see it's gray. It's less than. And notice it's also less than that yellow. Hey, I hope you guys are seeing that. This is absolutely beautiful. And then what happens if you follow that value? So we talked about how this right here is more than that. But look, this is sensitive stuff. If I took that value right there and if I evenly applied it to this tree, look how instantly this beauty of this dies, right? These little limbs are just as dark and pretty soon this is just going to get really flat on me. And then what would happen if I did the same thing, didn't even change that value? Well, it's close enough, you know, there, there's a little bit of difference, but it's not, 
It's not much. Let's just go ahead and make that the same. Again, what, what happens is this space starts closing down. Right? The, can you guys see that happen right there before your eyes? And so that's the importance of value and edge and everything else. It's really the story of measure. Just that slight release makes all the difference in the world. Okay? And what if, well, you know, some of this is really nice. Couldn't we add that? Why couldn't we just add some of that back there? All right, why don't we just add, add a little bit of that color? You know, this is a really pretty, it's my favorite color. So let's just make sure to add a little bit more. And again, what that's going to do is, is it starts to suck the idea of distance out. Suck the idea of distance out. And we know what Rembrandt said, right? Without atmosphere, a painting is nothing. And that release is what atmosphere is all about. All right, let's take a look at his other one and we'll call it a night and be ready to go at it again tomorrow. So just a reminder, if uh, you haven't already or if you're new, please uh, like the video and give the, oops, I don't have it here. Let's go back here. I got it. There it is. We got to get some of that action in there. All right, so we're three times a day, five days a week in December. Monday morning jump or mo morning jump start feedback on student work in the morning. Uh, I demo or share my studio work in the afternoon and then I look at the masters in the evenings. And again, this is a John Carlson. The author of um, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. And what do you see here? What do you see here? What if we reoriented things just a little bit? If we do that. These can you see differently? Can you see a little clearer? What if I asked you, what about our that dark shape, that dark, dark? Where's that dark shape at? Do you guys see that? Does it come in here? All right, it seems to sneak across here. Is that our dark in there? Gibbs there and we got do you see there's a there's a pattern so now that you see that look at that dark shape right it, it doesn't go straight from the bottom up to the top Right, we got a little bit of it here. We skip out, go there. We've got all of this real heavy in here. Connected over to here. Do you see that? And then it gets less as it comes out. And then we're left with this. And then on this side, we have a different kind of characters. Look, he put different trees over here. It's more of a solid value. So that the, these notes differ from those notes. And look at even though he's doing trees, the shape he came up with, right, transcended the trees. 
and was a beautiful gesture and um, I'm not even sure what, what to say, but just that shape and the release of the shape from more to less. It's just so gorgeous. You guys appreciate that? Right? How does he get you back into the woods? How does he get you back into the woods? So we've got snow taking us across, snow taking us across. All right, though, then we got to jump over there. Then we got snow here, and look, it comes here, all the way over to that side of the. Tr and then where does it continue? It continues here, and then it goes back even further here, right? Nowhere else, right, is the snow going back that far. Do you guys see that? And for that reason, you're going back into the woods there. Okay, if you're not used to looking for this thing, it can seem very subtle, but it's, it's really very, very practical, very practical. And then with a little bit of a color difference, you can accentuate things or bring them close together. But look how that dark separates off the gray of those distance trees. Right. And then did you notice the sky? How bright blue is that sky? How white is that sky? Compare that sky to the white snow. Right, the sky is a lot less, and that's why you're focusing on the snow. If you'd make this that sky really, really strong, if we made this really strong, we wouldn't know whether to look here or here. Okay, so that's the importance of value and the importance of making not making them even right now that I've pointed that out can you clearly see how much brighter and lighter that snow is than the sky you know and even those tree trunks even though they're kind of gray those first ones are still have a lot more color in them than the distant ones and I'm talking the trunks, I'm not talking the fol foliage. All right, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Then look at the negative sky shapes in the distance. He doesn't have holes everywhere, but they're bigger to smaller gathered around this one area. All right, do you see a bunch of sky? No, no sky holes back there, right? He's kept that more as a solid value there so you could focus on those front trees. Then there's, and then once those front trees go, he gives you some sky holes in the distance. Okay, well I hope this has opened up a few eyes. I know when I really started studying these, these guys, and their negative shapes and the values, um, I really was blown away. So I hope you got something out of it. Again, if you enjoyed it, please make sure that uh, you subscribe, like the video and subscribe. Like I said, we're going live three times a day, five days a week on YouTube. And we have a sketch club going on on Facebook Meyer Studio on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings. So thank you for being with me, and we'll see you guys next time.